Hello. It's early June and everyone is constantly reminded of our unwanted guest CNA. They are telling everyone how rosy and sweet CNA could be if they're the union for you. They have been showing us the Kaiser and other private sector wages and why not the public sector wages that they represent. For our third video, we went all the way up to Petaluma Valley Hospital. This trip was to find out about the former CNA nurses' experiences, and we got lucky. We found an RN leader who was a CNA member in the past, and now the president of their independent union. He told us their substandard CNA representation in the last 10 years. The backdoor deals between CNA employee reps and the management creating a weaker contract. Their deception and tactics CNA do when they are raiding a union. Their hardship decertifying and successfully kicking out CNA. Their history with CNA, he tells us the bigger union isn't better and much more. If your wages, benefits, and working conditions are really important to you, you'd watch the whole video to really learn how substandard union CNA really is. If you haven't watched the two previous videos we made about San Mateo County Medical Center and Contra Costa Medical Center, we are including the link to this message or it's in the description area. Both county facilities are in the high cost of living in the Bay Area. Uh, one is between Palo Alto and South San Francisco and Contra Costa is near Oakland. From the three facilities, we heard the same thing. Poor representation of nurses, poor wages from the two county facilities, RMP having higher wages, poor working condition at San Mateo, half of their nursing staff are nurse travelers. We are told by the two nurse leaders at San Mateo and Petaluma Valley Hospitals about backdoor deals by CNA employees and management creating a very weak contract for the hardworking nurses. As a union leader, I'm very much aware that CNA does a poor job representing county employees and we've heard that they do a poor job in the private sector too. We know there are many former nurses who work for us since they lost their job there. We also know two recent VMCIC nurses who lost their job at a nearby CNA private hospital. And I'm sure there are other nurses which had the same predicament. Someone from the OR complained to me that she lost her pension at Good Sound. I urge you to watch the whole video to really learn about CNA substandard representation of nurses. All they really want is your hard-earned money. CNA's raid is about the possibility of losing our independence as a union, having a weaker contract, which means lower wages, poorer benefits, and poorer working conditions. It's a serious matter. Please don't sign any cards with CNA. Our livelihood is at stake. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, I'm here today at the um, Petaluma Hospital with uh, Jim Gerlich. Uh, could you introduce yourself, Jim? Uh, yep, I'm Jim Gerlich. Uh, I'm the president of uh, PSNP, which is the union that represents all the nurses here at Petaluma Valley Hospital. Uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, we were successful in decertifying uh, CNA. Uh, CNA represented us for close to 30 years mm -hmm. in the hospital, and uh, they were actually really, really good for the first 20 years, I would say. Uh, at that point, they were a grassroots union. They fought hard for uh, the nurses. They listened to the nurses. The, the reps were there to support the nurses. And what we saw uh, over the last, um, that last 10 years that we were with them was the exact opposite. Uh, our, our nurses felt unsupported. Uh, the, the CNA would uh, continually get to a place where um, they weren't listening to what we needed at the negotiating table they would promise one thing only to we felt very strongly that they were working with the employer behind closed doors 
and um, and even walking up to like the last night before a negotiation would close, promising one thing, but then in the end say, no, sorry, we're not going to fight for that. We'll have to save that for something later. And so that last 10 years was uh, the CNA using this contract that we had built up over this 20 plus year period in order to use pieces of that and trade it for lesser language for other hospitals. Um, and the whole time we said, you know, we'll support these other hospitals, let's lift them up too, but you shouldn't be trading stuff that we worked hard for um, in order to, uh, to foster or, or create this, um, this lesser language uh, for a, a common table. That's what they were working on. Um, so uh, yeah, we so ready. We were so ready to get away from CNA, uh, and we we had a long fight in order to do that. CNA did not want us to uh, to break away from them. Um, and we had to deal with lots of bad behavior from CNA during that process. Uh, they were coming to people's houses, they were leaving uh, information about um, people's pay and their addresses. I mean, it was horrendous some of the stuff that, that CNA was doing, um, following uh, nurses into patients' rooms in, in an effort to talk with them, waiting for people in break rooms, showing up at all hours of the day, uh, soliciting nurses to not walk away from them. But the nurses here at the hospital, they were done. Going door to door, leaving information that was um, you know, personal financial information, addresses and things at people's doorstep, uh, on people's doorsteps. Um, but they, um, they also, like they would be here at all times of the night and they would, they bring in food, they wanna, you know, try to sweet talk you, you know, I think like what they do is they come in and they try to act like they have all this money and power and it's all great and and they do have a lot of money but they don't use it in the way that you would think that they're going to use it uh, there there's a lot of um, leverage that they could use but um, we felt that their national agenda trumped what was necessary for their individual hospitals and um, so they they kind of would just leave you leave you hanging um, they wouldn't follow through on your calls and etc um, some of the other things that they did uh, so back in 2015 they also uh, attempted a raid on the hospital up in Santa Rosa Memorial, uh, Santa Rosa, and the same kind of bad behavior. They were there all the time, you know, all, all the hours of the day, following people into patients' rooms. The hospital actually ended up filing something against them for that type of behavior, but they were relentless. Uh, they had these uh, cards that were folded up that um, they they would say to members, you know, sign this uh, if you want more information about what CNA can offer. But if you open up that card, it actually said, I support CNA and would like them to represent me, uh, something along those lines. And so we started getting information because we, we talk regularly with the union that's up there. And so we started getting information back like, you know, they're saying that these nurses signed these cards in support, but that wasn't really true. And when the nurses found out that they what they had actually signed, they were upset. So I'll say they were upset to, to say the least. Oh, um, not as far as like what did CNA offer us? Uh, I was never a big fan of Pan Zero sandwiches, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I did have some good breakfast burritos at their, their expense. Um, but as far as uh, representation, I mean, we've been doing it all along. You know, I mean, we had a CNA rep in here, and you know, when we needed him or her to send something across with the official union stamp on it, that was great. Uh, 
but a lot of times, like even the grievances, you know, we were researching the data uh, in the arbitration cases that came, you know, we were doing the, we were putting the case together and, um, and I know of at least a couple of arbitrations where, you know, CNA wanted to kind of go down this path and it would have turned out very different and, and the nurse would have lost in the end and had it not been for our chief nurse rep who was going, no, you can't accept that. Um, and, and the outcome was good because of that. I, I, there's nothing that CNA offered us in the last 10 years that that we would miss. That you were, you were doing it anyways. Why, why have someone... We're, we're doing it, and i got to say, like, I love not having the middleman right now. Mm -hmm. It's really, really nice. If you have something you need to say, if there's a flyer you need to put out, there's a message you need to... We're talking to our nurses. We're doing it directly. We're not going through this red tape, and, and we don't have to worry about whether that fits in with the national agenda or if, you know, if, if they you know, want to focus their attention somewhere else, and so that, that's not their deal. This is us. This is what we have to fight for. And, and that's not to say, you know, CNA also liked to say when they were in that, you know, look how big we are. There's strength in numbers. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you that since we have gotten away from CNA, we have had more support from our local community and our local unions. And I mean, the fact that you guys have come up from, you know, that far south, and you, it's tripping me out that, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we're all dealing with this. And I honestly believe that if there was less of that uh, interference that CNA causes, we would all be better. Uh, how important is this to um, have the nurses to be together at this time, um, concerning you know what's going on at the, where we're at? Um, well, it, it's as important now to stick together over this issue as it is in any issue that you're going to take on, right? If if being an individual was all it took, if all it took was you speaking up for what you believe, there would be no need for a union. But obviously, uh, things being what they are, you need multiple voices. Um, I can only say again that I really, truly, honestly believe that nobody is going to represent you better than you. And so um, if you as a group of nurses want something, go get it. Don't be afraid to say what you need to say to your employer and, and, and do it for each other. Uh, CNA, their representatives, they, like I said, they have their own agenda. Um, nobody's going to represent you better than you. So you guys, if you if you if you want it, you should do it together, and, and say what you need and say it loudly. Do they, did you guys get a contract? Do you have your contract now? We're negotiating currently. And that's from since the two, the, from the certifying C, CNA. So how many years later is this for you? So we have been negotiating for about a year and a half now. After the due cert? Right. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of that, it's, it's interesting because the, the hospital, uh, you know, we said, you know, yeah, we're a new union, but we're the same nurses. So this is our contract. We built it. We're fighting for it, and and I'll tell you, like already, you know, it's been a long process. It's a total waste of time because we have spent the last year plus to just kind of circle around, and and basically we're at the same place we were. I mean, some minor changes, nothing major at this point, but basically we spent the whole last year getting back to where we were. But uh, that was the hospital saying, you know, you're a new union, we need to open everything else up, but. I know that what we have so far is already better than what we would have been pushed into getting had we stayed based on what I see at other hospitals that are represented by CNA. So um, so I, I know we're on the right path 
And so no, no regrets. And can I just add this, because you, you said it real fast, but you said that the hospital was saying that since you're in the union, not being with CNA, that you have to open everything up. Can you talk about that? Like, what, what are they trying? What do they mean by that? Well, they're trying to say because you know, whenever there's a new union, you have a first contract that you have to ratify, and so they're not recognizing our years of doing this job, and so they're saying, well, you are a new union, so we're going to start with every single article. We're going to open up every single article. So that's what we've been doing. So they're not using your contract previous to this CNA? They, they have been resisting. They had been resisting it uh, for the longest time. They would call it the defunct contract or the expired mm -hmm. contract. And, you know, we just kept hammering home. It's our contract. You know, this is, we built it. We're not giving up on this. This is our language. These are the things that are important to us. These are the things that are PDH specific. And um, and so, you know, now when they talk, you know, they're talking about our contract. And so, you know, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, again, speak your truth, right? Um, you don't understand what you have already in having your own union and you have all the power that you need in order to get what you need. And so don't muddy the waters by sticking another another person in the middle of that whole thing. They'll never know until they lose what they And have. then once you lose it, I'm telling you, it is a struggle to get away. Right? Just think, I mean, just think about how much money would be going into the CNA coffers every single month. There's a reason that they want you. Yeah. So, but it's not because they can offer you something better than you can't get for yourself. You can get what you guys need. Um, so you're a, you're, you're a union that's now um, an independent union. You're no longer with CNA. Um, how hard was it, because I'm asking this because some of our members are saying, well, can't we just, like, get away from CNA in, in, anyways? If it doesn't work out, that's what they're telling me, and they don't understand how hard that would be. And so could you explain that process, how to desert against um, the, the union that you were with at the time, which it was CNA? Well, so uh, our situation is very difficult in that uh, just to get away from CNA, um, you had to garnish 30% of the bargaining unit to... Uh, that, that actually turned out to be the, the easiest part, was getting enough signatures, because like I said, nurses were ready to be cut loose from these guys. But then the CNA started this all-out campaign, same thing, don't leave us, they were holding meetings, uh, they filed, they ended up finding a, um, a ULP to file against St. Joseph's, uh, saying that, and it was so ironic, but they, what they said was that during the process of us trying to uh, get enough signatures and to actually file the desert paperwork, that they were, that the solicitation and distribution policy that was St. Joseph's limited them in their ability to have access to the nurses. And so they were trying to say that because we were in-house, we had more access to the nurses than they did, which was totally ridiculous because, like I said, they were here at all hours of the day. They were using rooms left and right. And I, the employer, I believe, wanted them in here. And, and, and because they do work closely together, they were willing to accept dumbed-down language, which benefits the employer. They don't want to deal with us because they know that we're fighting for the working conditions that we are going to work in. Mm -hmm. CNA doesn't have to work in those exactly. working conditions. So um, uh, that process, you know, once that ULP was filed and it went to the labor board, uh, you know, we we not only uh, made a plea to CNA to knock it off like we it was the vote was so clear that we wanted to get away from them um that there was just no no reason for them to continue to try to be here um and then we did the same thing with the employer and we were like please you know settle this settle this ulp 
you know, fix this solicitation and distribution policy. And, and the funny thing is, is that that solicitation and distribution policy that was such a problem, it was, it was actually a really strict policy that was changed to be too strict because of the CNA's behavior when they tried to raid Santa Rosa Memorial Hospital. So their behavior was so aggressive, like I said, they were inpatient rooms soliciting that then the hospital went the other direction and tried to keep them out of everywhere. So, you know, the fact that we were trying to get away from them and we're, we're strapped by all of this because of, like, we got into needing to get away from them because of CNA's behavior, then we couldn't get away from them because of CNA's behavior, and then we were fighting CNA's behavior in order to get away from CNA's behavior. You know what I'm saying? It was just like this crazy, like, they just, they were, they're, they're just this all-encompassing, like, that you, you, it, it's crazy to try to get away from them. So it, it's easy to sign up for them, but they will fight you to get away from it. And the funny thing is, like, so when we finally got that ULP, when they finally dismissed it and they cleared the way for the vote, CNA left us. It never even went to a vote. They didn't want it on the record that we would, that they would have taken a desert. So then they wrote a letter and said something to the effect of, you know, uh, even though we don't believe that this is in the best interest of the nurses, we have decided to not represent nurses at Petaluma Valley Hospital anymore. So they, they actually, and, and they were courting a few people. I mean, we had maybe a handful of people that were still like, oh, I think we should stick with CNA. They left them. And, and they just walked away from everybody at Petaluma Valley Hospital. So it never even had to go to a vote. Um, you mentioned um, that um, CNA wasn't uh, representing you guys properly, uh, and and you mentioned um, off camera that uh, about backdoor deals. Could you um, make go more in details about that? Yeah. So, um, you know, through the course of negotiations, it used to be that whatever happened in the room between the union and the employer happened in the room with all the parties present. And what we started to see over the last few negotiations was that there were more uh, meetings that happened over, say, like an administrative room and there were no nurse rooms there. And we started to say, you know, no, no, like we need to all be there in this meeting. Um, the last negotiations that we did with CNA uh, that you know was kind of like the final straw for us and, and we said we're not going to do this again if we can help it uh, we were we were all together with a few other hospitals those other hospitals that were, were working to bring up their contracts and um, and the whole thing was set up to that the employer and CNA, they were going to settle all these contracts for all these hospitals at the same time. And so we were all down there for like this three, four day session. And up until the very end, when the CNA came and said, I think we have the best deal that we can possibly get for everybody. Um, the whole last probably eight or 10 hours of that experience was no nurses, in the rooms with administration or you know it wasn't it wasn't even local administration that was in the room it was upper C, uh, upper st joseph's uh, they weren't affiliated with providence at the time but upper st joseph's and the uppers within cna so that was all got that we were cut out of that whole deal right so then in the morning when we were presented like, okay guys, this is what happened. This is, you know, and, and we had sent them in, you know, we had said we wanted to be there. No, we weren't allowed to be there. We had sent them in and said, um, you know, these are the things that we have to have. They came back out and they said, we didn't get everything. This is the best we can get. Uh, and we, uh, we need you to tell the nurses to ratify. Uh, to finish that, so so we left Oakland, said that we you know would not uh, tell the nurses to ratify. We met with CNA the the day after, 
and um, were basically told that we needed to tell our bargaining unit to ratify that contract because if we didn't tell them that there was, so if you don't ratify, you know, the whole process can start all over again and we were basically told that we would not be supported by CNA mm -hmm. to continue to fight for what we said was necessary. Uh, and um, we so don't, we don't, you guys were CNA at the time, right? We were CNA at the time, so basically our union said, you know, we're going to let the employer have at your contract and we're not going to defend you. Right. So we, we were conflicted. Uh, we could say to the nurses, we recommend ratification because the, the, the outcome of you not ratifying, we knew, would be that they're going to just gut our contract. We're not going to have any support. But we, all of us on that team voted not to ratify that contract. Now the nurses still voted it in because we said to ratify the contract. Um, and uh, that was a really, really crappy place to be in. Um, and I would tell any of you who are dancing with the idea of having CNA represent you, do not do it. This, uh, you are never going to have as much strength and as much voice as you do when you speak for yourself. There is nothing that uh, CNA can tell your employer that you cannot. You, um, you are the people that are taking care of those patients, and nobody knows what you need better than you do. Uh, CNA, they are not working on the floor. They have their own agenda. They have Panera sandwiches and burritos that they have to buy, and they have to fly people around and put them up at hotels. And there's all there's a that's a business. It's a business. Don't 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 think of it as anything else. And um, and if you uh, if you're speaking truthfully and you you know what you need and you're committed to each other, you will get what you need.